Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I am the Jess in Sunday Jess, and I have another mission prep video this week that I'm super excited about, something I want to do for a while, something I'm very passionate about because I hate a bad packing list. And that's exactly what this is. <laughs> okay, that sounds a little harsh. So if you guys are getting ready to go into the mission field, and this video is mostly for sisters, but an elder can also get some good tips from this video. So if you guys have gotten your mission call, you have probably received this book. Now, I don't know if this is still what it looks like. I probably imagine so because the contents of mine, at least from two years ago, have not been updated in probably 10 years. So I doubt they managed to change the cover. <laughs> Gosh, I sound super negative. Anyways, <laughs> so this week I want to go over the what to bring list that's found inside this call packet that you receive with your mission call and basically tell you all the things that are wrong with it and help you prepare a good packing list that will actually set you up for success in the mission field and not leave you feeling like you brought too much or you're not bringing enough because this list is not good. <laughs> After serving my mission in Lima, Peru and realizing all the things that this book got wrong, I wanted to share my tips and tricks with every single sister so that way you guys don't feel like me in the mission field, like I said, feeling like you brought too much or didn't bring enough because that's exactly what I did. And before we get started into this video very far, I do want to say that I'm doing a really fun giveaway. I'm giving all the details for this giveaway at the end of this video. I'm giving you permission to skip to the end of the video if you need to because this giveaway is super exciting. Basically, I'm giving away one ticket to come with me to the Women's Session of General Conference that is going on in two weeks in October during General Conference. And after you hear the rules and do all the things in order to enter, I will be picking one girl to come with me to the Women's Session of General Conference and just have a really fun evening in Salt Lake City together. You can check out the description box below for all those details on how to enter and win. So let's go ahead and get on into this list. So to start off, we have outfits, six to eight outfits. Now, once again, like I said, this video is mostly for sisters. Elders, you bring six to eight shirts, call it a day. Yeah, yeah. Sisters, no. Bring as many outfits as will fit in your suitcase. <laughs> Do yourself a favor now. Literally, if you have an extra space of room, put in another shirt, put in another skirt please, you will thank yourself later and hopefully me. But honestly, as many outfits like clothes, shirts, skirts, pants, if pants are allowed in your mission, sweaters, cardigans, pack it. Because you're wearing the same clothes for 18 months, things wear out, things might not fit you anymore, they can shrink, you might gain a little weight, sadly. I have a whole nother video about that if you want to check it out. <laughs> and so things change in the mission and you don't want to be stuck with the six to eight outfits that this call pack told you to bring because you're not going to like it. So as many things as you can fit in that suitcase, awesome. I'm pretty sure I brought like 25 shirts <laughs> and like 15 skirts. I bought so many and a lot of my stuff could like mix and match. So I probably literally had like 200 outfits that was possible. And as you get into the mission field, like I said, things wear out, you trade things with other sister missionaries and it's a great fun time. It's awesome, love it. Bring more than six to eight outfits, thank me later. <laughs> All right, Sunday shoes, it says one to two. Okay, here's my thing. Mission prep books and movies and this call packet make a sister missionary seem like they're just some glamorous little Disney princess like frolicking through cobblestone streets in Europe, just sharing the gospel and throwing Book of Mormons like they would flower petals. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, there's no such thing as Sunday shoes in the mission because Literally, your shoes that you wear on Sunday are the same shoes that you're wearing throughout the whole week. So when you try to hear this weird stuff about like, oh, pack a nice pair of high heels for a nice meeting with your mission president and, and to go to church on Sunday. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> you will be running around trying to get to your meeting with president. You will be jumping on and off of buses going to get investigators to bring them to church on Sunday. Sunday and meetings and things like that are not like a day off. <laughs> they're really busy. In fact, they're even busier than your normal days because you have to fit a normal day's worth of work into that day plus a meeting with president or plus going to church. These aren't relaxing times. You don't want to be wearing high heels. I made that mistake for you. So trust me, don't do it. I'm pretty sure I brought like three pairs of high heels on my mission, wore one of them like 
one time my first Sunday and trust me all of the sisters looked at me like I was a dip <laughs> because I was and my feet were so sore. There's no such thing as Sunday shoes. There's only proselyting shoes which in here says you should only bring two. No, 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 no. Also wrong. <laughs> I can tell this video is gonna be kind of long because we're only on the third item and we're already six minutes in so sorry about that but trust me you're gonna love my advice because it's true. <laughs> and this isn't just applicable to my mission. This is pretty universal in my opinion after talking with so many sisters that have served all over the world. So bring more than two pairs of proselyting shoes. Once again, as many shoes as will fit into your bag that are comfortable, that are cute. Make sure you like them. Don't go buy some ugly, chunky, sister missionary approved shoes. They don't have to be like that. One of my all-time favorite pairs of shoes that I wore to death on my mission were a little pair of brown leather oxfords like this from Rocket Dog. I'll have them linked down below if you guys want them. Love them. Find a pair of shoes that you think are just like totally awesome that you're gonna love. Walk around in them for like maybe a week before you go into the field because you're gonna be wearing those shoes all day every day doing everything so make sure they're super comfy but also cute and functional and then buy four pairs of them <laughs> or have your mom send you more of that shoe in the mission because once you find one pair of shoes most girls stick with those and so bring as many as you can honestly um, and you know in a few different colors and a few different styles so you do have options but don't get so limited to thinking oh these are proselyting shoes and these are Sunday shoes because they're the same thing. You go proselyting on Sunday so there's no time to switch shoes. You don't want to be bringing shoes in a bag. Baptisms are the most stressful day of your life as a missionary. You don't want to be trying to tiptoe around in high heels and you might think that I'm like some like super tough girl that wasn't super into like fashion on the mission. Heck no. Look at these pictures. Was I not like adorable? Not to toot my own horn, but like all my companions said I was like the best dressed, so. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not trying to make you look like some elder here. <coughs> Actual picture of me in the mission. I'm trying to help you still like feel cute and still feel really pretty, but also not be frustrated with the things that you brought and feel like you can't even do the daily tasks of a missionary without stressing out about what you're wearing and what you packed, so. Okay, it says here garments 12 to 14, at least. <laughs> So laundry is something that is a little different varying on the mission, but most of the time if you are serving outside of the United States um, or even in the States, you don't have a washer and dryer in your apartment. Very rarely. Actually, I don't even think it's allowed. I, I could be I think so. So you're doing your laundry in laundromats or in many places like in South America, you are actually paying another member of the church to do your laundry for you. Well, guys, that takes a couple days. Most countries outside of the US don't use dryers, so things are actually hung out on the line, and they take two to three days to actually be washed, be dried, be folded, and get back to you. So during that time when your laundry's actually out, you still need to have clothes to wear. So 12 to 14 pairs of garments seems like a lot, but brings so much more, because even though I was 30 minutes away from a temple, which is very rare as a missionary, um, we still weren't allowed to go get garments whenever we wanted. We were allowed to go to the temple twice a year and we could get garments then if we wanted to. You pack well, you don't need to buy extra garments. So pretty sure I brought like something like literally like 20 garment tops and 20 bottoms in like two different styles. Karenessa is one of my favorites for the winter time. Um, whole video about garment styles and fabrics that can help you depending on where you're going in the world on your mission. That will be linked right here. Here I think, yeah. That will help you a ton because a lot of times, you know, the garments you're sleeping in, if you're in a humid place, you sweat so much. Sometimes I would change my garments too maybe three times a day because you're running around and you're sweaty and you're gross and guys things happen way more than they probably should. The amount of times that I peed my pants on my mission is too many to count which is really embarrassing but really funny to look back on. But needless to say I you go through a lot of garments in a week and you know if it's taking two to three days for uh, your laundry to get done you need a lot of extra garments and so also when it comes time for your period every month that is a really tricky situation while wearing fully white underwear so also you're gonna want extra garments for those days too it's a whole thing that just pack as many garments as fit in your suitcase. You'll be super grateful that you did. Okay, and then on here it also says exercise clothing. So that's a pretty broad statement for something that, you know, is kind of important. So when it comes to exercise clothing in the mission, maybe bring like three to four t-shirts that you're fine with like sweating in. That also, you know, you could use for P-Day. 
Um, brings like basketball shorts. Uh, you can bring like yoga pants and leggings to work out in only in your apartment, um, but you can never wear those on P day. So, you know, you can bring stuff like that that's a little bit more form fitting, but just be aware that you can't wear that for P day too. So, you know, bring literally just one pair of jeans for P day. Don't bring two pairs of jeans on your mission. I brought two, only wore one the whole 18 months. I rarely even wore jeans on my P day. So, bring about three to four sets of exercise clothing, along with like, you know, socks and your exercise tent and your actual like shoes to exercise in um, because you're exercising, you're sweaty. You don't wanna wear one pair of exercise clothing to work out all week long. And then like I said, you're waiting for laundry for two to three days. So then what, what do you wear while you're exercising for those two to three days while it's being washed? So bring some options, bring like two to three, maybe even four sets of exercise clothing. And that way you're not wearing sweaty, gross clothes all the time because no one wants that. And also one other little tip that I actually have talked about in a video that's all about exercise for missionaries, also have that link right here, um, bring sports bras. It seems kind of weird because you're like, I'm a missionary, like I need to like look good. Okay, while you're exercising, literally just bring a sports bra and bring some spandex shorts to go underneath your exercise clothing. One, it's gonna save you on garments. You're not gonna have to worry about sweating through garments and also using more pairs throughout the week that you'll have to wash later on. And it's just way more comfortable, in my opinion, to work out in an exercise bra and spandex shorts underneath my exercise clothes because then I can, you know, get some good stretching in and like I said, I'm not stressed out about sweating through another pair of my underwear. So it says under here, pajamas one. We've already talked about the laundry thing. Bring more than one pair of pajamas. Bring like two to three because you'll want summer pajamas, you'll want winter pajamas depending on where you're going and once again, laundry takes two to three days. You don't want to be pajamaless while your laundry's being done. <laughs> now, also pajamas is kind of a loose term because let me let you in on a little secret. So 99.9% .9 of missionaries sleep in their garments. Let's be honest. <laughs> but you do want something to kind of like walk around the house in so you're not just walking around in your underwear with your companion, although most people don't really care. But usually what sisters do most of the time, at least this was pretty common in my mission and from what I've heard from other people, is most of the time as a sister, at least in like the, you know, hot months, we mostly walk around the apartment in our garments and just like a big loose t-shirt. And that is your pajamas. I very rarely wear pajama bottoms unless it was like winter time and it was freezing cold in our apartment, which was most of the time. But it was very few months out of the year, at least where I was going, so kind of plan accordingly. But at least for those hot months, you're not really wearing pajamas and, you know, you get pretty comfortable with your companion being around them 24-7 and, you know, if you're anything like me, you're peeing your pants too, so really all privacy is just gone. <laughs> Now, when it says robe and slippers, bring a robe and slippers. <laughs> I love this. I was one of the few missionaries that brought a robe, and I was so happy I did. One, it makes the MTC so much easier trying to get from, like, the big showers to your actual, like, dorm room place. You don't have to pack all your clothes with you. You can just put on your robe and, you know, move about, and it's easy. Slippers are fantastic during the winter. Studying in the mornings can get really cold just sitting at a desk and reading for two hours, two to three hours a day. So you want some slippers, they're fantastic. And it's just great for like walking around your apartment because it keeps your apartment a lot cleaner than wearing your gross proselyting shoes all over the apartment all the time. All right, now we're gonna go on to personal items. It has under here the Missionary Library, which if you guys don't know what the Missionary Library is, it is the True to the Faith book, the Jesus the Christ book, our heritage and our search for happiness. So these books are super important and they are wonderful. Some of my favorite books of all time. They are fantastic gospel resources. So super necessary to have, but not necessary for you to buy. So you might feel super weird and maybe like a little bit unprepared not bringing the missionary library with you into the mission. But let me tell you, every other missionary has bought these books and then left them in their apartments all over the world. <laughs> So you might not have them in the MTC, which isn't a big deal. In the MTC, you're not worried about reading the missionary library. And if you really are, I'm sure your companion will have it or another missionary that you can just borrow it from momentarily. But once you actually get into the field, you're gonna find so many of these missionary library sets in every apartment you go to because every missionary just leaves them. And so, I mean, if you really want your own like pristine, like personal set, yeah, okay, buy them. They're awesome, like you're definitely gonna want them. But if, maybe if you're a little bit tight on your missionary budget, um, or you know, you're out of packing space because those books are kind of heavy, don't stress about bringing them with you at first. You can find them later on in the field and they're gonna be just as good and it's all the same in the end. So don't stress out too much about the missionary library. So on here, it also says a completed four generation pedigree chart with your name on the first line. Really worry about that. 
I didn't bring a pedigree chart at all on my mission. And for those of you guys who don't know what that is, that looks like this. It's like a neat little fan chart that has like all of your family history on it. And you can use it for a teaching tool, but eh, <laughs> you can print one out on the mission, call it a day, move on with your life. Don't stress about it, try to do it before. All right, the second page, sheets and pillowcases. Bring two sets of sheets, like a fitted sheet and a top sheet. Bring two sets of those. And then also two pillowcases because you'll be bringing your own pillow. And like I said, laundry takes two to three days. You do want to wash your sheets every once in a while because they get gross. So while one's in the laundry, you still need to sleep on something. <laughs> so, and yeah, I might sound like a little sarcastic and a little bit like, I can't believe people actually do this, but people actually do this. I knew a lot of missionaries and I had a lot of companions. They only brought one set of sheets and they were only sleeping with like a blanket on the gross mattress while their sheets were being washed. And that was kind of gross. Whatever, you do you, but just bring two sets of sheets. They take like no room and you're gonna be really happy that you did. <laughs> Passport holder, no. <laughs> I had a really cute little passport holder. It was pink and had a little plane on it. Yeah, the the office elders ripped it off and threw it away when they put my passport in the mission office safe. So don't stress about a cute passport holder because you're probably not gonna get it back if you do. So this is wrong. And you also never carry your passport around with you all over the country because that's how you get a passport stolen. <laughs> so don't listen to this. All right, when it says personal supplies, makeup, toothbrush, shampoo, deodorant, hand lotion, um, all that stuff. So if there's a particular product, um, like whether it be, you know, makeup product or like a uh, hair product or like facial cleanser, um, for example, I'm really picky about my facial cleansers and knowing I was going to Peru where the options are probably pretty limited and skin type is way different in South America. So they weren't going to carry facial cleansers that I knew I would really like that would work for me. I just brought three bottles of my facial cleanser. So that sounds a little excessive, but I was really happy that I did. I wasn't trying to find a face wash that worked for me. I wasn't having to worry about my acne. I just had three bottles. When I ran out of one, I already had the other in my suitcase and it was just super easy. So if there's a product like that that you really like and that you know you're not gonna easily be able to find in another country, you can Google it. You can find out that way um, if something's available in another country. Um, then just pack enough of it for your whole mission. Uh, I knew a lot of sisters that did that with particular like medicines or makeup products, different things like that because once you do leave the United States, it is a little bit tricky to find the products that you know you know really well, that you know they'll work for you and, and that are pretty inexpensive. So I definitely suggest that. All right, coming to the end, it says contact lenses are discouraged because of the risk of coronal injury or infection. Okay, if you wear contacts, don't worry about like not bringing contacts. This is kind of ridiculous. Like if you wear contacts, just wear your dang contacts. I had companions that literally brought 500 pairs of daily contacts on their mission because they wear contacts. Dailies are better because then you don't have to worry about like losing one or them tearing or... So if you wear contacts, don't stress about this manual and it telling you that you shouldn't be wearing contacts because if that's what you do then you do you. <laughs> All right, and then finally under miscellaneous, it says, uh, you know, small sewing kit, very useful. Don't overlook that. Um, alarm clock, also, something I feel like most missionaries don't bring. Great, great thing to have an alarm clock. Um, a laundry bag, I didn't bring a laundry bag. <laughs> Definitely bring a laundry bag. Uh, I really, luckily I was able to get one in the MTC. They gave them to us as part of like our Christmas present, but that's not a normal thing, don't expect that. Um, but bring a laundry bag because you have to get all your dirty laundry somewhere. Cause like I said, you're not gonna be washing and drying your clothes in your own apartment. So bring a laundry bag. And a watch, okay. This is serious, you're gonna want a watch. You might think, oh yeah, we're gonna have a cell phone. Why would I want a watch? You want a watch. <laughs> I've talked about this in other videos, but bring maybe like, two or three or four really cute watches that maybe you just find on Amazon for like five, ten bucks a piece. It's not a big deal if they get lost. It's not a big deal if they get broken. You have a couple extras because batteries die, things happen. And it's really fun to have like a different watch every day and to not stress out about like only having one that's really nice. But a watch is very crucial because you're not going to want to be in a lesson and like have to look at your phone in the middle of like a really spiritual moment because that kind of kills the vibe. <laughs> Whereas a watch, you can just kind of like discreetly look down at your arm at while you're talking and it's just a lot more courteous and I think a lot better. All right guys, so those are all my tips. I know this video was a little bit long, but it's super useful, I promise. Like I said, you will be thanking yourself and hopefully me later on when you realize 
how right I am. <laughs> and for those of you who stayed to the very end or for those who just jumped to this part in the video because you heard there's a giveaway, well, there's a giveaway. <laughs> So I'm doing something super exciting. So I'm inviting one of you girls to come with me to the woman session of general conference this October. So not this Saturday, but the next one from when this video comes out because I thought it'd be super fun to spend some time with one of you guys because I have amazing subscribers and I try to do things like temple dates or fun little things here and there where I'm actually going to meet you guys and hang out with you and get to know you. Um, and so I would love to bring one of you guys with me to the woman session of general conference. It'll be super fun. I have one ticket for me and one ticket for somebody else. So to enter the giveaway and come with me to the woman session of conference, all you need to do is you need to grab your cell phone and I want you to go onto YouTube and screenshot your favorite video of mine that either you know has really touched you that you thought was really funny that you think other people would really benefit from and I want you to screenshot that video and I want you to post it on your Instagram stories and tag me so that way I know and that way other people can also find my channel and other girls who are getting ready to go into the mission field can find all of my wonderful advice <laughs> so once you have tagged me I will obviously get notified and you will be entered into the giveaway in order to come with me to general conference here in two weeks so this giveaway is open to anybody. If you are from like Asia and you're coming to General Conference two weekends from now, awesome, let's go together. I will pick one girl and we will meet up there on Temple Square or if you live here on in Utah, maybe we'll drive up to Salt Lake City together and we'll go attend the session. I'm super excited. I've never been to a women's conference, but I would love to go with one of you girls. So those are the details to enter. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. The rules to enter will also be written in the description box down below. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you want to come to a women's conference with me, all you gotta do is just share one of my videos on your Instagram stories and tag me, and that's that. So I'm going to pick the winner this Friday, which is September 27th, and I will be announcing that winner on my Instagram. So make sure you're also following me on Instagram as well so you, you can actually be updated if you win or not. Anybody is welcome to enter, you just have to be a girl because it is the woman's session of conference, so sorry boys, the, you know, few of you that actually watch my channel. <laughs> but yeah, so that is this week's video, super long, sorry. Enjoy entering the giveaway and good luck to all of you guys. Can't wait to meet one of you and I will see you in next week's video. Bye!